Hello again, this is section 10.5, which is completing the square. We're going to solve quadratic equations um, by doing that. A uh, quick review, there's five different ways to solve quadratic equations. You can graph and find the x-intercepts. You can use a square root. You can solve by factoring if you can factor. If you cannot factor, another way to do it is by completing the square. And uh, the next one would be quadratic formula. So there's five different ways. Um, I know in an earlier video I said we were skipping graphing and completing the square, but times have changed, so we have to put them back in. So here is um, completing the square. I hope this helps. Uh, first thing, you need to know how to fill this last number in the C to make a perfect square trinomial. So a simple way of doing it is you take the B and you half it to 7, and then you square it to make 49. Okay, so you half of B, you half B, and you square it, and you put it in the C. Okay, and one way to look at it, when you do complete the square, it would look like this. Okay, because x plus 7 quantity squared is that, and there's your perfect square trinomial. So another quick one, half it to 8, square it up to 64, and so 64 makes this a perfect square trinomial. Okay, and again, the, the part of the homework will ask what number goes in for here to make this a perfect square trinomial. You just need to put the 49 and the 64. I'm just showing you this part so that when we do start completing it, you can see that that's how it becomes. So it becomes eight, x plus 8 quantity squared. You can even do it with a negative here, but notice this has to be a positive because positive 7 times positive 7, when you do the L of FOIL, becomes positive 49. This, in this case, when I half it, it becomes 5 here. Oops. And I square it up, and that becomes 25. But when I do this N, and sorry, I just noticed this should have been a Y. When I do the N, it's N minus 5 quantity squared. Okay, so that's the, how you fill in a perfect square trinomial. You half it and you square it, and you'll see what I mean when I start solving the equations. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you're solving it, make sure your x, the a in front of the x squared is 1. And I have an example later on there, but this first few, it's easy for you because there's nothing in front of here, so there's an invisible 1. Okay, you also want to move everything else to the, to the right side of the equosign. So this one is done for you already. So the next step, what you want to do, is you go x squared plus 5x plus blank is equal to 50 plus blank. Whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other. So whatever I add here, I have to also add here. And this is where we go back to what we did over here. I'm trying to create a perfect square trinomial on the left side of the equal sign. Okay? So I half it, and I go 5 squared, or 5 over 2 and I square it, and I get 25 over 4. Okay, and I, whatever I add here, I need to add 25 over 4 as well. Okay, and then what I do is I just do this, like I showed you. So it's x plus 5 over 2 squared is equal to that. F 50 if I wanted to do that, it would be saying 200 over 4 plus 25 over 4. I can just put common denominators, which would make it 225 over 4. So I'm just going to make it 225 over 4. Okay. Now that I have the quantity squared equals to something, in order to get rid of this square, I need to square root both sides. Okay. And all this does is take off the squared, so I'm left to x plus 5 over 2 is equal to, and square root of 225 over 4. I can change that to square root of 225 over square root of 4. Okay, Square root of 225 is 15, so it's plus or minus 15 over square root of 4 is 2. Okay, And I need to solve that separately. So I got x plus 5 over 2 is equal to negative 15 over 2. And then the x plus 5 over 2 is equal to the positive 15 over 2, since I have a positive and negative. When I minus 5 over 2 over here, minus 5 over 2, 
I get x is equal to negative 20 over 2, which is negative 10. And if I minus 5 over 2, minus 5 over 2, I get x is equal to 15 minus 5 is 10 over 2, which is 5. So x is equal to negative 10 or 5. Now what you need to know is, if they come out to nice integers, I could have actually solved that by factoring. If I minus the 50 over and made it x squared plus 5x minus 50 equals to 0, it would have came out to x plus 10 times x minus 5. And I would have could have used the 0 property to get that. But this is just another way, because you didn't know how to, if you didn't know how to um, factor, here's another way of solving a quadratic equation. Okay, so here's another one. What if I have this? I can see that that's not going to be factorable. Well, that could be factorable, I'm sorry. But if you can't see how to factor that, here's how you do it by completing the square. First thing you do is see that this is 1, so we're good. I need to move that over, so I need to add 136 to both sides. And I'm going to get x squared, actually I'll use the orange pen so it's easier, x squared plus 9x plus blank is equal to 136 plus blank. All I did was move the 136 over. And now I need to half it, 9 over 2, and then square it, 81 over 4. Drop this down, square it, 81 over 4. Okay, I added 81 over 4 to both sides. Now I have a perfect square trinomial on the left. I need to complete that side. So 136 is the same as 544 over 4. And now I can combine it. 544 plus 81 is 625 over 4. Okay, just like I did on the, in the green, I square root both sides. So I get x plus 9 over 2 is equal to plus or minus. Square root of 625, so again I can split this up, is 25 over 2. Okay, and then I want to split it again to make it the positive and negative. So x plus 9 over 2 is equal to negative 25 over 2. x plus 9 over 2 is equal to positive 25 over 2. And I'm going to do a shortcut by just minus C 9 over 2, minus 9 over 2. Okay. Just to try and shorten this. And x is equal to negative 34 over 2, which is negative 17. And over x is equal to 25 minus 9 is 16 over 2, which is 8. So actually, you could have factored this original problem to x plus 17 times x minus 8. Okay, but that's how you do it by solve, completing the square. Okay, this one, I can tell you, is not factorable in the blue. Okay, there's no factors of 32 that add up to 20. Okay, so we do have to, in this case, you could graph it if you want, I wouldn't. Or you could use completing the square or quadratic formula, which is the next section. So what I need to do is minus 32 over. And notice again, this was 1. That's the first thing. So I get x squared minus 20x plus blank is equal to negative 32 plus blank. Okay, so all I did was move the 32 over and became negative 32. Whatever I add, I need to add. I'm going to half it and square it. So half of that is 10. Squared is 100. And because this is a minus, it becomes x minus 10 squared. Okay, so half it down to the 10, square it up to the 100, and then I can change it into the perfect square trinomial. And this is equal to 68. Okay, take the square root. Take the square root. And I get x minus 10 is equal to, and because 68 is in a perfect square, these other ones that were, in, even if they're a fraction, they are at least perfect squares, could come to 25 over 2. Um, and by the way, if you notice, I did leave these as fractions when I squared them. Okay, I halved it. 
into 9 over 2. I didn't go to 4.5 and squared it into a decimal. Leave it as fraction. Same here. I left it as 5 over 2 and squared it as a fraction to 25 over 4. Okay. Um, in this case, now the square root of 68, you need to do that on a calculator. And you're going to get plus or minus uh, 8.25. Now we can split it, and you get x minus 10 is equal to negative 8.25. x minus 10 is equal to positive 8.25. And again, I'm going to do shortcut. Sorry, plus 10, plus 10. And I get x is equal to um, 1.75 here. And x is equal to 18.25 there. And that's how you get your two answers. Okay, and the last example here, um, if you notice, the first thing I keep telling you to check for, the three. You got to get rid of that three. Okay, so all you do is divide everything by three. You can do that. And you get x squared minus 4x. Uh, and I'm just going to split it now. Equals 5 plus 9. All I did was divide by three. But now I put in the plus blanks on both sides. Okay. I'm going to half it to 2, square it to 4, drop down to x minus, because this is a minus, quantity is equal to 9. Take the square root, take the square root, x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 3. Split it. x minus 2 is equal to negative 3. x minus 2 is equal to positive 3. Shortcut. Shortcut. x is equal to negative 1. x is equal to 5. Which means I could have, again, factored it. But that's another way of completing the square. Another way to solve it, completing the square. Okay. Hope this helps. This is section 10.5, which is... Solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Take care.